Praise the Lord, everybody. We are so glad to be in the house of the Lord. Just one more time. We give God all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Um, let's just keep in our mind, we come in to praise the Lord. We come to give him the glory. We come to give him the honor. We come for no other reason but to give God all the praise that we have. And I'm going to ask that everyone can stand. We're going to go into prayer. And just get in your mindset of how God has kept you over this week. How God has just continued. He's still keeping you, even right now. Oh, God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. God, we thank you for your grace and your favor. God, we thank you, oh, God, for keeping your hand upon us. God, we thank you for just waking us up with the breath of life this morning. God, we thank you, oh, God, because you didn't have to allow us to come into this house today. You didn't have to allow us to get up out of our beds today. Oh, God, it wasn't the alarm clock that woke us up, but it was because of you. It was because of your hand on our life. It was because you didn't let us fall. You didn't let us turn over and go into a coma. You didn't let us go over into a stroke, oh God. But you woke us up this morning because we still have purpose. We still have something to do. We still have a life to live. Oh God, and we come to just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we just come to bless your name today. Oh, God, we come to lift you up today, God. Oh, God, thank you for traveling mercies throughout the week, God. Thank you for keeping us from danger seen and unseen, God. Thank you for protecting the children, Lord. Thank you for protecting the things that we have, Lord. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you. We, th we can't thank you enough. Oh, God, we bless your name today. Oh, God, we give you the glory today. Oh, God, because we know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, oh, we don't know where we would be. Oh, it's by your grace that we're not consumed. Oh, it's by your mercy that we're still here today. Oh, God, and we can't help but give you the praise. Oh, God, and we ask that as we go into this service, as we go forth in giving you the glory, as we go forth in giving you the honor, as we go forth in giving you the praise, that you reign on us today. Reign in this building. Oh, God, let your spirit fill this house, God. Oh, God, touch, heal, and deliver today. Touch, heal, and deliver today. Oh, God, save the sin sick soul, God. Oh, God, touch those people who have hung down here. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, depression, you have no place here. Oh, anxiety, you have no place here. But we have the spirit of holy boldness. And we will go forth into the throne of grace with holy boldness and we will lift up your name we're going to give you the glory oh god we're not scared of the devil we're not scared of the devil uh, we're not scared of the devil oh god but we're going we gonna to have the confidence we're going to have the confidence oh god we're going to have the confidence and you're going to give us the power god because your word said it so your word said you do it oh god and we're going to believe it lord we believe your word, God. We believe everything you've said about us. We believe everything you've said about our lives, God. We believe your word, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, and because we believe, because we believe, we're not going to sit down all day. We're not going to sit on our blessings. But we're going to get up on our feet. We're going to give you the praise, give you the honor and give you the glory because it's by your mercy that we're still here hallelujah 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus come on open up your mouth open up your mouth and give him the glory tell him thank you jesus thank you jesus oh god let the redeemer of the lord say so let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're not going to let this moment pass us by. We're not going to let this moment pass us by. But because you allowed us to come out today, because you allowed us to come into this house today, because you allowed us to get out of our bed, we're going to give you the praise. Hallelujah. Open up your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. Open up your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank you how even though some of us lost power on last week, you still have all power. You still have all power. And you still sit on the throne. You still reign. You still reign over everything. No matter what we go through, you're still on the throne. No matter what we deal with, you're still on the throne. No matter what we may go through, we can have, we know that you are the one. You are the one who healeth. You are the one who delivers us. You are the one who can do all things but fail. Thank you, Jesus. We serve an impossible God. Thank you, God, for being an impossible God, for doing the impossible. Thank you, God, for showing up and showing out, oh God. And Father God, we ask you to show up and show out in this service. Oh God, let your spirit be here. Oh God, touch, heal, and deliver today, oh God. Oh Father God, and as we go throughout the service, touch the speaker, oh God. Touch our leaders, oh God. Touch the sanctuary, oh God. Touch the people that are here. Touch someone who's over on Facebook, God. And let something be said or done that touches the hearts of somebody. Change the heart of somebody. Transform the mind of somebody. And Father God, when we come out, we're going to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up a praise unto heaven and say amen. fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. O Zion, bring, that bringeth good things, good tidings, get thee up into high mountains. O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid, say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. And the word of the Lord is blessed. I'll be reading this affirmation of faith. We affirm our faith in the Bible. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only infallible written word of God. We affirm our faith in God. We believe that there is one God, eternally existent in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We affirm our faith in the blessed hope. We affirm our faith in the repentance and salvation. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We believe that the regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We affirm our faith in the Holy Ghost. We believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to believers who ask for it. We affirm our faith in sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whose indwelling the Christian is enabled to live a holy and a separated life in this present world. Amen. And this is what we believe. Amen. 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 You are him today. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my 
burdens down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. Friends don't treat me like they used to, since I laid my burdens down. on today. Amen. God is who he said he is. Amen. And here at St. Timothy, our address is 2407 North Columbia Avenue. Our pastor is our own Elder Orney Edwards Sr. And our first lady is Evangelist Missionary Leilani Edwards. Amen. And we are located here on the east side of Indianapolis. Amen. And so I'm just here before you just to give our announcements. So before I get started, if you like me, have to write everything down and get your calendar and put everything on the calendar where it needs to be. Now is your time to get out your pen and paper and your calendar. Amen. Because I do have some information for you all. So first, here at St. Timothy Tabernacle, we do have our Sunday school, which takes place on Sunday mornings, 
right at 11 a.m. Now, although we are not live on Facebook, you all, we are still live yet here in the sanctuary. So we invite you all to come out, and no matter what age you are, we do have a Sunday school class for you. So please come out and join us here in our sanctuary on Sundays at 11 a.m., and then followed by that is where we are right here in the service. We are in our Sunday worship service. Hallelujah. Word. God is exalted. Amen. We are here to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. And this is where we will hear the preach word of God. And then this Tuesday here at uh, St. Timothy Tabernacle, we will have our prayer and Bible band. And that will be live on the um, Facebook, amen, as well as live in the sanctuary. And that is this Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. Amen. And then this Friday, believe it or not, it is the second Friday of July already. Amen. And so we will be on Friday night, we will be in the hands of youth on a mission. And that is also here in the sanctuary and live on Facebook Friday at 730 p.m. And so these are all opportunities that you all can have to join us to be here with us in St. Timothy. And then here are our upcoming announcements. Announcements. Amen. So first we have, amen, on uh, Saturday mornings, we have our women's uh, weekly prayer hour, and that takes place on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. And then this upcoming week, as I mentioned, we will be here at St. Timothy for Tuesday night and Friday night service. And then the week after that, believe it or not, you all, we will be in the 97th jurisdiction holy convocation. A 97th. Amen. And this will take place in um, South Bend. So on Wednesday night, it's uh, Wednesday through Friday, so that is July the 19th through July the 21st, our, our nightly services will take place at 7.30 p.m. Wednesday through Friday, we will be at Saints Memorial Church of God in Christ at 321 Liberty Street in South Bend, Indiana. Amen. And then on Friday, right after the service, we will have our jurisdictional youth night amen so there's something for each and every one and then on that friday we will have the youth night amen and then our official day will be the following day which is saturday july 22nd at 11 a.m now pay close attention to this the address will change amen we will be at greater holy temple church of god in christ at 701 napoleon street in south Bend. amen so first we'll start off at saints memorial and then on that saturday we will be at greater holy temple so please write these days mark them on your calendar because we want to plan to be in the number because as we always said whatever god is doing in this season we don't want him to do it without us. Amen. And for each and every one who is saying they can't come out to our weekly services, you won't be able to join us for the Holy Convocation in South Bend. But there is a part of the service that you all can always join in on. And that is none other than the ministry of giving. And we're just going to give the Lord a hand praise right there. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Now, we know we cannot be God's giving no matter how much we give. We cannot be God's giving, but we want to bless the Lord. Amen. Because as he bless us, amen, that we will be a blessing. Amen. Not only to others, but back to the kingdom. Amen. So whatever the Lord places on your heart to give, we have several different ways that you can give. And we know the first way that you can give is just to meet us here and be in the sanctuary. Amen. Another way you can give is to mail a check to St. Timothy Tabernacle, 2407 North Columbia Avenue. And then another way you can give, amen, for all of us who have technology, we can give through our Givelify app. And that is an app in your store. You just go, make sure you search the right church name, St. Timothy Tabernacle. And make sure you get the right address. Amen. 2407 North Columbia Avenue. So your monies will be received right here. And then the fourth way that you all can give is none other than our cash app. Amen. So that is 
dollar sign, St. Timothy 2407. And giving to the Lord is that easy. Amen. And just remember, as the word of God says, when you give, give with a cheerful heart because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Now, at this time, let's put our hands together because we are in the hands of the praise and worship team. Amen. Amen. How many of you love the Lord? Yes. yes. Amen. How many of you love the Lord? Yes. Hasn't he been kind? Hasn't he been kind? Yes. Hasn't he been good? Yes. Hasn't he delivered us? Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Bless the Lord. He is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord,
must want his glory. How many of us want his glory? We want to be where you are. But we have to be where you are. Lord, we want to be where you are. Lord, we want your glory. Lord, we want your presence. Lord, we want to be where you are. There's peace where you are. Lord, there's joy where you are. There's healing where you are. Lord, there's deliverance where you are. I want to be where you are.
next part says, my dance said I can have it. He said I can possess it. Whatever I need is mine. Cause my dance says that I can have it. My dance says I can have it. My dance says I can possess it. Hey, my dance says I can have it. My dance says I can possess it. My dance says I can have it. My dance says I can possess it.
somebody know that you got the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word says, thanks be unto God who gives us the victory. How many know you got the victory over every circumstance? You have the victory through every trial, through every tribulation. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. Praise God for the victory. The, God, the word of God just says, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Come on, open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Oh, God. I got the victory. Look at your neighbor and say, you have the victory. You have the victory. Mother Glenn, you have the victory. Mother Graves, you have the victory. Mother Judy, you have the victory. Hallelujah. My sister, you have the victory. My brother, you have the victory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The, the song says, my dance has crushed Satan under my feet. I don't know about you, but I have some things that the enemy has tried. Amen. He's tried to distract and destroy and discourage. Hallelujah. And he's used tactics. Hallelujah. To try to get us off course and off course. Hallelujah. But if you can do something for me, I know somebody's sitting down. Somebody's sitting down. Can you stand up for a minute? And in the spirit, and in the spirit, you come on. In the spirit, there's some things that the enemy is trying to attack you with. But just know that everything that the enemy has tried is under your feet. Hallelujah. Everything is under your feet and you have the victory. So I know we can't necessarily, somebody, some people can't shout. Amen. Some people can hop and, and, and leap. And then if you, if you can't do much, just pat your foot back, go back and forth. But we're going to shout together for the victory that God has given to us. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. And if I got some tambourine players, come on, hit some tambourine. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I got the victory. And this is my victory dance. This is my victory dance. Hallelujah. Glory. Hey. Come on, praise him. Hey. Glory, glory. Hey. Thank you Jesus thank you Jesus come on say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah hallelujah help yourself help yourself hey Oh, 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 come on and praise him. Oh, 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 Oh! 
celestial sword hallelujah we have the victory even there amen there's victory on this side say it's a win-win situation look at your neighbor and say it's a win-win situation hallelujah it's a win-win situation hallelujah now i'm going to present our pastor amen the man of god and i want us to extend our hand and tell our pastor you have the victory, the victory. you have the victory. victory. Point to our first lady. Says she has, she has the victory. victory. Look, point over our hands for our mother. Say they have, they have the, victory. The, victory. the victory. The victory. The victory. Hallelujah. So present our pastor, Pastor Orton Edwards Senior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Father in heaven, we thank you for being mercy and kind. We thank you for all that you are. We thank you, Lord God, that you declare we have the victory in Christ Jesus right now. And Lord, we ask you to touch by your spirit, by your power. Lord, but move miraculously through this place right now, God. Touch the bodies right now, God. Heal sick right now, right now by your spirit and by your power, Lord God. You're able to do it, God. And we trust and depend on you because in you we live and move and have our being. You are the hope of glory today. And we glorify your name. We exalt your name for you're worthy. You're worthy of all the praise and honor. And we want to give you the glory and the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. We exalt your name. For you are God and God alone. And no one can do the things you do. Oh my God, my God, my God. Hey, hey, hallelujah. Bless your name. Glorify your name. 
Oh my God, my God. We thank you right now, God. Bless in a mighty way, Lord God. Sitting us right now, God. Endow us the more, Lord God. With thy spirit right now. And with thy power right now. Oh God, right now. We thank you. We glorify your name. We lift your name up. For you are God and God alone. And no one can do the things you do. Baby, I shout out our higher glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We exalt your name. We word your name, Lord God. For you're worthy of praise and honor. And we want to thank you. And we want to glorify your name. And we thank you right now, God. Lord, word by mouth, Lord God. Give me what they're saying, how they say, Lord God. Eba shout out of the city. Let your mother shout out of the Yisri Lahaya. Let your mother shout out of the SAA. Let your glory be revealed right there by shout out of the Aya. Oh God, hallelujah. Let your glory be revealed. Oh, in this place right now. Oh my God, my God. Hey, hallelujah. We exalt your name. We glorify your name. We exalt your name. Oh my God. Oh, we thank you, Lord God. We glorify your name, for you're worthy of all praise. We thank you right now for all that you're doing. And we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. There used to be a song back in the day that said, In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, we got the victory. Is that tell me who can stand before him when we call on that great name? That name is what? Jesus. 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 We got the victory. And we got the victory. And if we got the victory, we ought to act like we got the victory. We win already. We are winners already in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We glorify your name. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We do give honor to the Spirit of the Lord today. The Son Jesus Christ is head of my life. Thank God for everyone that's here. Thank God for our elders and the roster and ministers, to our church mother, to our first lady. Miss Nan Edwards, the mother, Sarah Lee Grave, our church mother, to all the people of God, amen. But I thank God for being here today, being saved and sanctified and baptized with the Holy Ghost with a fire. And do speak in other tongues that the Spirit of the Lord give utterance. But I thank God that I know already that I got the victory. Man, you ought to know you got the victory. And you ought to shout, I got the victory because I got Jesus on my side. We win it already. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hey, my God. Hallelujah. My give my shout out here. Say, hey, hey, glory. And when you got the victory, and you got Satan, Satan is underneath your feet, and you begin to stop walking on his head, and begin to stop walking on his head. And realize he's under my feet. And I'm going to just call on her. Because I got your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Put that foot down. Up and down. Said I'm walking on his head. Because he's beneath me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank God. Get your Bibles. 
Get your tablets, your phones. We go on to the book of Genesis, the 32nd chapter. Mm. Hey, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We got the victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before you. When we call on that great name, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Sometimes people don't take song to heart. But it had a it had a message in the in the music, Amen. And I thank God for our praise team leaders, Amen. I thank God for the hymns, Amen. They go hand in hand because there's a message in the in, in the words, Amen. But you have to recognize that we got victory in Christ Jesus. Who can stand before us? Will be called on what His great name. And that name is who? Jesus. Jesus. When you're just about getting ready, I almost have an accident. But if you just call on his name, say Jesus. Somehow or another, the car stops. Or the impact is not as great as it could have been. Because Jesus is in the midst. Amen. Oh my God, my God. Hallelujah. Bless the name. Bless his name. Genesis, the 32nd chapter. And we're going to talk about a few verses. Amen. Amen. We're going to start at the 24th verse of Genesis, the 32nd chapter. And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the break of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thy bless me. And he said, and then what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be no more called Jacob, but Israel. For a prince that has power with God and with man and has prevailed. And one of the things about it is we thank God for the reading of his word. We thank God for all that has been said. We thank God for his glory and presence. Amen. The backstory of this is that Jacob had left home, amen, some time ago before because um, he stole the blessing of his brother, birthright, that was his brother, amen. The backstory is is that uh, Esau wanted something to eat, amen, and the situation happened is he said, Jacob told him that if you, Jacob said, if you give me your birthright, give me some to eat. He came in from out the fields and had nothing to eat, and, and he said, if you give it to him, he said, what I have to do with this birthright, you can have it at all. I'm hungry, amen? But even the backstory about this is God, even when Jacob and Esau was in the womb of their mother, amen, and Becca began to insult the Lord about what was this. He said, there's two nations amongst you, amen? And he said, the one old younger shall be over the older, amen? But all these things that ever happened and that this thing had to happen. So when he began to, uh, Rebecca began to realize that uh, his father, 
that was going to bless the, bless the son, he, what did he do? Uh, Rebecca went and told Jacob, I need you to do something, amen? Because I want to make sure this thing comes to fruition like it's supposed to be, amen? But it was done in trickery, amen? And when it came down to pass that this man, uh, he told him, get the same information, make this. And, and, and Rebecca knew how her, her husband liked, amen, uh, the, the food, amen, amen? And so she began to say, she told, you know, he told Esau, this is what I want you to do. He wanted to go out and he said, go out and get this and I'll bless you, amen. And he went out, amen, and, but the mother had a, had a hand in this situation, amen. amen. Told him, and he, uh, Jacob said, hey, mom, you know, I don't, you know, I don't, you know, Esau a little hairy and I don't have, I'm not that, I'm a, I'm a smooth man, I'm a smooth, you know, I'm not as hairy as my brother, amen. He began to tell him all that he began to tell him, and she had, she had a plan for it, didn't she? And she told him, go get this coat that he had, and amen, and you began to put it on you, and he got the food for his father, and began to what? He got the food for Isaac, and what happened? Amen. The blessing came, amen. But he, he did test him, find out, you, you sound like, you, you, you feel like Esau, but you talk like Jacob. You know, and all of a sudden, what happened? Esau missed out on the blessing, amen. Jacob got the blessing and he was upset. But he told uh, Isaac, I want to still bless me. Bless you. He said, I can't bless you. Uh, I can't bless you because I gave the blessing away already. But in the process, uh, Esau said this, look, I'm going to mourn my daddy. But after I mourn my daddy, I'm going to mean somebody that's going to be in some trouble. And mama told her son, Jacob, it's time for you to go. Now, you know what you've done. We know what we had done, but I ain't going to take no part of it. But I need for you to leave because your brother's talking about he's going to mourn his daddy, but he's going to come out to you. And when he said he'll come out to you, that means he meant what he said. So mama sent him away to his, her brother's house, Lebanon, and, and, and sent, sent him away. Amen. And all of a sudden, he went there, and Jacob, he went because he was afraid, amen. He was scared, amen. Because you know when you're scared, you're going to run, don't you? When a dog chasing after you and you really have, he knows you got fear, what you going to do? You're going to run. Oh, y'all said, well, I'm just going to talk to the dog like he's going to have some sense, amen. Some dogs don't have no sense at all. And once they see that you're afraid, they really get intensified. And then all of a sudden, what happened? The first car you find, amen. You jump now, they got some dogs that jumps on cars too, amen. And I mean, they got some dogs that jump. You have to go on the top of the thing and they climb. You have to jump off and run and they run too. But this man was out there, going to be out to his brother. Mama sent him away and then he goes there to his, his uncle's house and all of a sudden he, he sees what's going on and he, he's lighting his eyes on one of his, can I say, is his cousins, amen. Oh, it got quiet in him, man. Yes, 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 yes. He saw the one that he loved enough and he works at. He told his, uh, his uncle, I'll work uh, seven years for her. Right, work hard for seven years. Now, men, let me tell you this you're going to have to work, amen. And I want you to find it before you get, a, get married, you need to have, need to have a job, amen. This man was willing to work. And I mean, he worked. Then all of a sudden, he worked, and then all the time came time for the wedding, and, and then they got him drunk. That's what it was, amen? That's, didn't they say that in my Bible? He had a party for him, and then all of a sudden, brought, brought in what? Brought in Leah, amen? And he woke up the next morning and said, what have you done to me? This is not what I wanted. I worked this hard. And you give me her? <laughs> See, since he was a trickster, he got tricked too, ain't he? And so he began to say, you know, uh, let me say, it's not right for me to, you know, give my, the, the younger before I get the older away. He didn't tell him that. When he did tell him, was he said, well, if you do this for me, he said, look, if you work another seven more years, I let you have Rachel. Woo. That man said he worked as hard and it, it really to him didn't feel like no time. Amen. So now he got two wives. Amen. 
Now, y'all, this is the end time. Y'all don't have no more than one wife, amen? The Bible said, let every man have one wife. Amen. And let women have one husband, right? All right. You're not over in Saudi Arabia where you can have as many as you think you can. You can't take care of the first one. Therefore, you need to just take care of one. I'm being real with you. And I tell you, he had, he had, at this time, he had two wives. He didn't work 14 years. Then all of a sudden, he recognized, I don't have nothing. Amen. He worked. And everything that uh, Levin had, Jacob worked, and he, it was blessed. Yes. It was blessed. Everything he had, it increased with Jacob. But in the time that all they had, the Lord blessed them, and he got, had children and everything else. And all of a sudden, he told Levin, you know what? I don't work for you all these years, and I have not asked one thing. I haven't asked no money and nothing at all. Give me what belongs to me. And he began to tell him the story. He said, well, you know, all right. It's all right with me. He tells him, you know, all that the speckle, got uh, speckles on it, that, that would be my hire. And even God made a plan, and, and he made a plan every time that that cow came to the, this, this, uh, this rod, it changed its color. Every time the birth, every time the, the person came through, the, the, the cow conceived and everything came out speckle. Amen. So much that Jacob was blessed. Just from, just from Esau, just from his, his father-in-law, lemons, a uh, 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 livestock, cattle, sheep. And all of a sudden, this man had more things and the Lord had blessed him just because of his service. Amen. It got time for him. He needed to leave. The Lord told him, go back home. And, you know, going back home, he still had this reservation in his mind. Like, you know what? Esau's still alive. And I still, you know, you know, he's, I think he still remember. I don't care if it's 20 years now. He still remember. He's still alive. So he decided to go on back. Amen. And he was so, this is so how he devised a plan. Amen. He devised a plan. He said, you know, he sent first the first wife. Then he sent the other wives with him. But the one he loved, he let it be last. By him. And he sent them over and they said, well, who is all this? You know, if you meet my brother Esau, tell him this is your, his manservant, uh, uh, Jacob, because he still was afraid of him. But it got to the point of being there that he began to think about all that he had and then he put these people in this flock, and this is your, this is, this is a gift to you. And he had 200 this and 200 that. I mean, livestock back in the day was something good. Now, even today, you got livestock is good. Amen? You got, a, you got 200 cows. You know, hey, you know, you're going to eat for a while. Don't you? You get, you get, you get some cattle. You, you got some money. You also got some meat. I understand everybody don't eat meat. God bless your heart. Amen. We, 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 we not, we're not upset. But you don't. But all that he had, that livestock and everything, he put that before him. He put his first wife, he put his help before him, then he put the next wife before, and then had a band of people. I mean, but he put Rachel way in the back. But then he let them go on ahead. And he saw, so who was this? This is, this is your servant, Jacob, and he's a gift to you, amen, because he's trying to, you know, calm the situation down. But then, I'm going to tell you this, he told him, he said, Jacob, Esau, and about 400 men is just coming your way. If 400 men show your way, you be running too, won't you? But what, what, what did Jacob do? Jacob sat there alone, and then the first verse began, he said that he... This is about what God, he said, and he, on his way, the angel of God met him. The angel of God met him. And he began to think about all that's going on. And, and you think about when he left the place, he said, he said, this place of Bethel. He, man, he began to think about it. He left on the way. He, sta he, he stayed a night one place. And he saw uh, the angel of the Lord ascending and descending on this ladder. Amen. And it's going up and coming down. And he says, surely the Lord is in this place. But he said, Lord, if you allow me to go here and come back, I'll come back and I will worship you on this, 
altar that I made. Well, all that process, now he's going back home. And going back home, he, he knows what he has to deal with. But then he inquired a man in the, 30, in the 24th verse. He said, he said, thy name. Hold a minute. He said, Jacob was left alone. And there he wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. Now, we have seen wrestlers back in the day. Amen. And you know, some of us watch, used to watch wrestling. And amen. Some of us still do today. Some of us just think it's a, it's a game. But back in the day, I would say Dick the Bruiser. And I think that was the best back in the day. Oh, yeah, y'all think I'm, I'm, you know, Dick the Bruiser was his name, amen? There was nobody like him, amen? At, at that time, amen, and the wrestler, they threw you over, and, you know, I don't know what, what they was going on, man, you know. And if somebody threw me over on my back, you know, and, and climbed and jumped on me. I don't think I would be, at that time, I don't think I would make it, amen? And I don't know what was that kind of wrestle, amen? He didn't say what that kind of wrestle. He said he wrestled with them. And you know when you wrestle somebody, you kind of get them and kind of get them to hold, and and you what you try to do. Now some of us young ladies, y'all y'all don't y'all don't wrestle, amen, amen. But some of us men, we know we how to wrestle. Oh, bless your heart, Sister Jane Jane, you do, amen, amen. Sometimes you grab a person and you what your you think is you trying to throw them on a on the ground. You ain't trying to hold them. You trying to throw them on the ground because you're trying to get the best. And when you got to get the best out of them, you got to get them down and what? Got to pin them, don't you? Hold them down. Let them cry out. Let them say, uh, you know, let them know. Say, I give up. Three times they tap them. Say, you know what? I can't. I can't do it no more. So there was none of that. I don't believe. But what happened is he wrestled with that man. At that time, he said he wrestled with a man. He didn't say it was God, but he wrestled with a man. And he said, the man said, let me go for the night, the daybreak. He said, Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. Now, blessing is the favor of God and God protection on him. And because the man didn't, because Jacob wouldn't let him go, he reached into his thigh and pulled his thigh and that's why he said Jacob had a limb. Pull his, his thigh out of joint. And when something's out of pull out of joint, you have some problem, don't you? And you're not going to walk the way you used to walk. When you used to walk straight up and this and that, and something happened, you're like... Because something hurt. But he pulled it out of joint. But he kept holding on. He said, let me go. Let me go. He said, the day breaketh. But he said, I won't let you go until you bless me. And began to think he hold on to her until all of a sudden he got what he wanted. And wrestling, they give up, tap off. But he, this man said he couldn't let him go. Jacob couldn't let him go until he got what he wanted. But has there a time in your life how you began to hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ and you began to tell him, I can't let you go until you bless me. There used to be a song back in the day, I'm on the altar, Lord. Want you to bless my soul. And when you get called on his name, kept calling on his name. He said, I'm on the altar, Lord. Want you to bless my soul. Bless my soul, Lord. And when you began to hold on to him and began to get a tight grip on him and said, Lord, I need you to bless me right now. I'm on the altar. I got a desire I need from you, Lord. But when you hold on to him, the answer come right quick, don't it? When he bless your soul, Lord, when he bless your soul, you are happy and you rejoicing because you got what you needed from the Lord. When you get a call on his name, when you get a call on the name of Jesus, when you begin to call on his name, something happened in the atmosphere, something changed in the place where you at now. But I know when I call on the name of Jesus, situation changed because I call on his name. In the midnight hour, you call on his name. You in trouble, you call on the name of Jesus. And when you get to call on his name, he began to do something for you. And he began to bless your soul. And when he began to bless your soul, you go forth and praise unto God because you know God has done something. Hallelujah. 
Bless my soul, Lord. I'm on the altar. I'm crying out to you. I'm praying, Lord, I need a help. I need your assistance. Hallelujah. In the process of time, Jacob held on to him. He prevailed against that man. He said, what is your name? He said, your name, my name is Jacob. He said, your name shall no more call Jacob, but Israel. And you have prevailed with man. You have prevailed with God. Your name has been changed from Jacob to Israel. And you're going to be the father what, of many nations. Hallelujah. I was just thinking about a story. Oh, my God. We had just got saved in September 9, 1990. Me and my wife got saved. And I began to think I got to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost that same night in Gary, Indiana. And I began to, my wife was still seeking the Holy Ghost and began to seek the Lord. And I was in one room and she was sleeping. I was reading this scripture and it fell on this mother, Glenn, about there he wrestled with a man. And the Lord told me to wake my wife up. Said, baby, get up. I need you to get this. She said, I'm, I'm sleepy. I'm sleepy. You know, I had to deal with it. I got oh, Julian and, and, and Ordney Jr. And I'm tired. I'm tired. And I went back again and sat back down. The Lord said, go wake her up. I went back and woke her up. And, and I began you know, to talk to her. And I said, baby, the Lord got me give me a shift to give it to you. You know, I just, you know, when I said the last time, I said, the Lord gave me this to me. She woke straight up. I said, this scripture, there he wrestled with a man. And I said, the Lord gave me this to give to you. No, I wasn't in the ministry, but I was just your brother. But the Lord gave me, because I know she was seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost also, too. And she got that scripture on that day and began to call. And that morning, you know, I went to, went to my, my job, I was in the Navy, went there, and I began to think about all that's going on. And I gave her, and I did my job, and she was at home, and, and she had Ordney, and, and had Ella Julie and Ordney, they, was, they were young babies at the time, and matter of fact, Ordney was probably about three, three years old, four years old, four months, I mean, let me, four months, amen. You know, I know I gave four months, he's four months years old, amen. But I'm going to tell you, amen, that day, she had the meal rest, Brother Diggins had the food ready, and the Tupperware and we was going to Gary, amen. That's a church that we came from, started from, that went to Gary. And I tell you, she probably had the Holy Ghost there, but the children started, boys started crying, and so she had to take care of them. But it's, I think she said she had a praise service right now. Yeah. Downstairs had a praise service, called on the name of Jesus. And when she began to call on the name of Jesus, amen, then all of a sudden I tell you, I think she said she fell over and the, and the children were looking at her like, what's going on, mama? I'm like, you know, but she was having a time in the Lord, amen. But she told me, I said, well, you going to church? Yeah, we going to church tonight. And she had my stuff. I said, I got your stuff in a Tupperware. And I got the children ready. And I got the, got the car seats. And all I had to do, book the car seats in the back of the seat of the car. And I tell you, she said, well, you eat your food. I drive. And I mean... Sister Edwards, she drove. Amen. Amen. I didn't look at the gas pedometer and see what was going on. But I know we lived in, lived in Great Lakes, Illinois, 80 miles from Chicago, past Chicago, into Gary, 80 mile round trip. But all of a sudden, we used to take about an hour and a half to get there. But all of a sudden, I don't know, the, the gas pedometer was saying, Jesus, 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 because she had her feet on that pedometer. I was sitting there eating, eating my, my Tupperware, the dinner that I had. I didn't look at nothing. I didn't look at nobody. I looked straight ahead and eat it. And all of a sudden, we ended up in Gary. And I think it was like 45 minutes. Instead of an hour and a half job, made it in 45 minutes. Amen. I don't know what she had that said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. On that, that gas pedal, whatever it was. But I didn't look at the pedometer, but she got us there. Amen. We didn't get no tickets or nothing at all. Amen. And I tell you that time, that service, it was a woman day service. She wore a white suit, amen. And she began to, she drove and she could testify. And, you know, yep, we had, we had altar call that night. And I'm holding the children, holding, uh, holding I think I was holding Ordney Jr. And my, my mother had uh, Julian. And my wife was up there, called on his name. And all of a sudden, some got a hold of her, man. 
And by the time I know she rolled from the, from the front almost in the middle of the seat at all. And I'll tell you, the Lord got a hold of her. And I mean the Lord baptized us that same night. But when you listen to the word of God, and I gave the word, don't let them go until you bless you. Sometimes the enemy wants to choke you up, but you still got to call on his name. You got to call on louder. He may try to choke you up. Say, Jesus, Jesus. And when you call on his name, hallelujah, something happened. And when he did that, I know, I heard her speaking tongue. I said, I know she got her now. But I know she kept on calling on the name of Jesus. Sometimes people say, you got to be on your knees. But when you're standing up and she was calling on him, the ball suddenly the Lord knocked her out, knocked her down. Oh, my God. But when you want something, you got to grab a hold of it. And you got to hold on to it. And you got to let it go. And I mean hold on to it until you get what you want from the Lord. Because you were seeking some of the Lord. But hold on to them. Hallelujah. Don't let them go. Don't let them go. Don't let them go until he bless you. Until he does what he said he going to do. Jacob had that knowledge. If I go and come, Lord, I will come back and worship you. But the whole story came down to it. Got his name changed. Then all of a sudden, the situation between his brother was all right. There was no enemy. He didn't want to take him out. But it was a, a, a best relationship. Because when something like that happens, first thing we do, we want to fight, don't we? We bring up stuff that happened 20 years ago. Why? Bring it up 20 years ago. You mean when you hit me, hit me in my eye? And I got a swollen eye? I remember that. And when they hit you in the eye and your eyes swole up or your nose and your nose swole up, you remember that, don't you? But let it go. Let it go. I can tell you one thing, somebody, and then you be tall and, and somebody hit me in my nose and my nose looked like, I don't know, like somebody broke it, Brother, brother Diggins. And I walked to class, you know, like, what happened to you? I said, I said, well, I got hit in the nose. So I ain't going to tell you who hit me. Amen. It wasn't my brother hit me either. Amen. <laughs> but when you get to that point of all that situation, let that stuff go. The past is the past. Whatever they've done to you and done, it's the past. Jesus Christ set you free, didn't he? Yes, Who the Son set free is free indeed. Yes. Stop thinking about that stuff in the past. We all have a past. We know we all have a past, don't we? I understand some people have been saved all their life and they ain't, had, they ain't done nothing wrong. That's, that's good. That's good for you. But there's some people that have situations and you let some things go. Whatever situation you got going on now, let, the, let it go. Don't hold on to that stuff. Because you want God to bless you, don't you? Because you got to let go of some things that of your past. Problems that happened in your past, you let it go. You don't continue on holding on to it. Because when you hold on to it and you keep seeing that person make you upset, angry and angry, you'd be more sicker than that person is. you angry at that person because they don't say something to you, talk wrong to you. We shouldn't be at the body of Christ. Shouldn't be talking them wrong to anybody. Let me throw that plug in, in there also too. I don't care who you are. You don't want to keep messing with people because then you run them out of the church. And when you run them out of the church, what happens? They hurt. Oh, he said, that's church hurt. You know what? Hurt people hurt people, don't they? You don't want to be hurt. You don't hurt nobody else. And when you get to that point of you think you have to open your mouth up and say something that caused somebody's problems, then you and your, you are, you are you the problem. And when you are the problem, you need to help be up too. And I, I think about everything. 
that Jacob did. God had to restore him. Israel did wrong, but God restored them and gave them, after 70 years, he gave them back what they had, amen? But because of what? Their disobedience. And when you disobey, you're going to get punishment. Y'all don't believe that? Did you get a whipping when you, dis, did you do, didn't do what you're supposed to do? I can raise both of my hands. You know better. And when you know better, what happens? You get in trouble. And you have to apply the rod of correction. Foolish is down in the child hall, but the rod of correction will drive it far from you. What that mean? It would, the rod of correction will get that thing straight. Get you straight too. Jacob got that thing straight. But then even you look about his, all the ancestors of Esau, and then they had some issue. The brothers got it together, but then family kept that mess going on. And this is why the problem we have, you know, you know, you, something happened in the family, you get that thing straight. You get it straight before and stop including your children. Your my, my mama, you did this to my mama, and I'm going and my daddy. And I'm gonna hold against you. All they don't they, they do, don't tell you they don't. Get upset and hold against you. Talking about you did my mama wrong, you did my daddy wrong. That time, parents didn't do a lot of talking, but sometimes children saw what was going on. And they didn't like it. And they, when they like it, they, they spoke out. When they got grown, you know, some of us said, I'm grown. Somebody told me they're grown. I ain't got to tell you nothing. I ain't got to tell you I'm going no place. Somebody told me that a few days ago. But they apologized. <laughs> And it wasn't none of my media children. Amen. All right. Yes, I want to make it plain. Amen. It wasn't none of them. I'm not going to call her name out anyway. Um, but when the Lord began to change some situations and the Lord blessed you want to make sure that God's favor and protection on you. And when God bless you, he's blessed you abundant. Amen. And when he bless you abundant, you want to bless someone else, don't you? Amen. May we all stand. If you don't know Christ Jesus and the pardon your sins, you can know him as your Lord and Savior. You can recognize him as your Lord and Savior. And all it is is asking God to forgive you sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent out his son in the world to contend the world the world through him might be saved. All it is is saying, Lord, forgive me my sin. I'm, I've done wrong. And remember, surrender to him. So, Lord, I've done wrong. And have a broken and contrite spirit. Don't just come without, Lord, I, I'm, forgive me. Because God knows if you won't forgive him or not. It's like when you're talking to people and you ask them, forgive me, I'm sorry I did wrong. I said something to you out of place, forgive me. They know you're sincere, but you come like, yeah, forgive me. I don't know what I did. You know, can I be real with y'all? Because some people need, need to talk how to get forgiveness. That's forgiveness for people. Because sometimes people just like, you know, if I did something, you know you did something wrong to me. You know you said something wrong. You know it. You know you did. They said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm, I'm sorry. I've done wrong. In the corner where if thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. How simple is that? That's easy, ain't it? Repent, ask him to forgive your sins. And he, he says he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And he won't remember it no more. God forgive and forgets. Some people need to ask the same double Lord, Lord, forgive and forget thy past. 
And then according to the word of God, if you confess that and believe that in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, because Jesus, no longer, he's no longer in the tomb, but he's on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. Ask him to forgive your sins, and he's willing to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Amen? Is there one on Facebook? And wherever you at, if you accept the Christ as the Lord and Savior in your comments, and let us know the city and state you are from. Uh, put your comments in there that you repented of your sins and asked God to forgive you according to the word of God. Romans, the 10th chapter, I believe, in the 9th to the 13th verse. Read that. And I want you, to, if you repented of your sins, I want you to get into the good Bible-believing church that teach you the word of God. Because now you are a candidate for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You got already made up mind. You can receive the same time when you call on the name of Jesus. And you can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost the same day. You don't have to wait. But if you have already made up mind and heart, you can receive it. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the word. We thank you for all that you're doing. We ask you, Lord God, continue on blessing us, Lord God, with your favor and your protection upon us, Lord, now. We thank you for all that you're doing. And we bless your name. We glorify your name for you. Worthy of the praise and honor that's due your name. And we give you the honor and praise. Continue on blessing us, Lord God. Continue let us show the favors, oh, your divine favor on us, Lord God. And your protection on us, Lord God. Heal the sin sick body right now. Touch those that affliction in the body from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Let healing virtue power go through their body even now. Whatever their conditions is in their body, Lord, you ask you to touch by your spirit and let healing go forth. And deliverance go forth by your spirit and by your power. Touch them right now and give them relief they need. According to our will and our purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. truly thank God for the word of God and I thank God amen because this word came to me personally hand delivered by my pastor now but I thank and praise God at the time we were just seeking the Lord amen. Amen, amen and wanting to be saved and I thank God the Lord came in and he did what he did amen. and you know what I tell you when I think back over my life Oh, hallelujah. You can't let him go. Yes. You really, truly can't let him go. When you taste and see how good God has been, you cannot let him go. Oh, he's been so good. Opened up doors, made ways, Amen. provided and protected us all down through the years. And I just really want to say thank God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah for his spirit. Amen. Amen. And how he loves us so. He loves his people. Amen. 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 And you know what? All of us are blessed. Amen. Amen. We're so blessed. And sometimes that enemy, like Elder Julie, uh, Elder Orton was saying, he wants to take your focus off things. And he wants you to think that you don't got that or that person's not in your life or you don't have no, no, he's a liar. Amen. He's a liar. Wait on God Amen. and watch God do it. Watch him do for it. For victory is ours. Amen. 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 We thank God for the word of God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our first lady. Amen. Thank you, We thank Jesus. God. I know this past week we were in our national aim Oh, meeting. yes. Amen. Thank God Amen. we saw different people from different other cities and states. And thank God for all those who came out and support. And we appreciate each and every one that went able to go out there and support. And some went five days, some went three days, some went, some went, some went. Or somebody watch it on Facebook. Amen. Amen. And you were supportive of the ministry. Amen. And we appreciate uh, our national church. They appreciate everyone that came out of sport. It was, a, I think, a packed house every time Every time we came there. I think from Monday on, uh, it was a packed house. Amen. Amen. And didn't our bishop preach? I was, uh, yes, the bishop said, yes, he did. Amen on Monday. Bishop Amen. Sting. He preached. Amen. He sure did preach. Amen. And I thank God for him preaching. And on Monday, then our presiding bishop, Bishop oh my God. Uh, Jeju Sheard, amen. Yes. Preach to us on also the oh, line. Yes. And he said, Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised that, that what you prayed for. God. Amen. Will answer. Amen. Let me oh, stop because yes. I'm not going to preach over again. Amen. Woo. 
But I thank God for each and every one that's here. And, and we encourage you, you all to continue Jesus. on watching us on Facebook Live and continue to support the ministry here, St. Timothy. Yes, thank Lord. God each and every one that's here for all that you've done. And continue on that support the ministry here at St. Timothy. Amen. And we thank you and we love you with the love of Christ Jesus. Amen. And God bless your heart. God bless you. We love you. We love you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.